They look an awful lot alike, but as the saying goes, don't judge a smartphone by its bezel. If you're still with us after that awful joke, stick around. We're going to be putting one of the best of Android up against the best of BlackBerry 10. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is HTC One versus BlackBerry Z10. We like to narrow our focus when we're talking about devices on two different platforms, so we'll keep this comparison limited to five categories. Build, UI, camera, ecosystem, and some test notes. We praised the BlackBerry for the sturdy quality of its hardware in our full review, and that looks to have been well-earned praise. The rugged plastic Z10 has held up nicely in the months since we reviewed it, though in all honesty that might have more to do with how often we've used it than how durable it is. The HTC One, with its aluminum body, certainly catches the eye more easily than does the BlackBerry Z10. Part of that is due to the silver color on our One here, but the difference extends to material choice as well, which has a big effect on feel and hand. Dimensionally speaking, these devices are nearly identical in thickness around the 9mm mark, and at 137 grams for the BlackBerry and 143 grams for the One, they're nearly the same weight as well. But the One's aluminum unibody is smooth, almost too smooth, in the hand while the BlackBerry's soft-touch back cover clings to the skin. That means the BlackBerry feels a little less premium, a little more common than the piece of art that is the HTC One, but it also means you're less likely to drop it and less likely to care if you do. Unlocking the screens, which we have to do with a button on the One, but which the Z10 lets us do with a gesture, we see another big difference in terms of displays. The screen on the BlackBerry Z10 is a 4.2-inch IPS LCD at a resolution of 1280 by 768. That makes for a pixel density of 356 ppi. While the SLCD3 on the HTC One is a 4.7-inch full 1080p panel, kicking out an absurdly high 468 ppi. That doesn't mean we can make out jaggy lines or other evidence of pixelation on the BlackBerry's display. Not at all. We can't. It does mean, though, that we have much more room to work with on the One, and colors also appear much more vibrant on the Android device. The Z10's display is also much warmer, with whites appearing much closer to beige than the pure whites on the One, though each display's blacks look equally deep at full brightness. You have to look past the pixels and delve into the software to get the full picture of how different these smartphones really are. Each of them is packing a pretty unique user experience. Of course, we're familiar with the Android Jelly Bean load on the One, but HTC's new Sense 5 layer brings a lot of newness to the experience in the form of a massive aesthetic overhaul and the addition of the social and news-heavy Blink feed. While using the One is a familiar experience, it's not without a slight learning curve as you adapt to the way Sense 5 does things. If you haven't used BlackBerry's new BB10 platform, on the other hand, the Z10's experience is not a familiar one. BlackBerry takes the home screen, app drawer, notification area model and flips it on its head. The app drawer is off to the right, a context-sensitive settings shade is accessible from the top, notifications live off to the left in the BlackBerry hub, and the home screen has been converted into a canvas for what BlackBerry calls active frames, which are half-icon, half-widget hybrids representing currently running apps. The whole shebang takes some getting used to, but after a while, you start to appreciate the value of the constantly accessible hub with its peak gesture, as well as the home screen with its webOS-like cards for buttonless task management. There are some similarities here, too. HTC wasn't about to be left out of the somehow still popular cards metaphor, so it's redesigned the task manager to include nine app hosting cards for Sense5. And each of these software loads also features a very usable keyboard. Sense 5's stock keypad is easily the most usable we've seen from an Android OEM, and we also enjoy the hollow-like highlights on each button as we type. BlackBerry's keyboard appears much more conventional until you start typing on it. The predictive text software allows you to flick words right from the keyboard up into the typing field, resulting in a much more efficient one-handed typing experience once you get used to it. Finally, BlackBerry has implemented some specific optimizations to the Z10 in order to play to its strengths while differentiating itself from the competition. Specifically, we're talking about the enterprise-centric features like the server-dependent BlackBerry balance, work, and personal dividing wall on the Z10, as well as its BlackBerry Protect security software. These features can be replicated to a degree on the Android device, but they're available out of the box on the BlackBerry. Each OS is snappy and responsive, and neither feels prone to crashes or excessive lag. 
app launch times are consistently faster on the HTC One, which is either a consequence of its quad-core Snapdragon 600 being more advanced than the BlackBerry's dual-core Snapdragon S4, or better optimized software, or both. It's not the RAM, which stands at 2 gigs on each device. But while we're talking memory, we should mention that the Z10 features a microSD slot for storage expansion up to an additional 64 gigs, while the HTC One is stuck at 32 or 64 gigs, depending on which model you buy. There's no expansion slot here. Not that you have much opportunity to fill up the BlackBerry Z10's storage, unless you're a media hound. BlackBerry got off to a great start filling its new BlackBerry app world, launching the Z10 with over 70,000 available apps, but many were ported from older versions of Android, delivering a less than stellar experience. And the app world was also missing some major titles. Big names like Angry Birds and Kindle were there, but they were few and far between. A few months later, we're still, essentially, in the same place. Though the app world has grown to include over 100,000 titles, big gaps remain to fill. Even Windows Phone finally sports Pandora and Spotify, and of course they've been on Android for ages, but they're absent on BlackBerry. Instagram, of course, isn't here. The Facebook and Twitter apps were built by BlackBerry and have received awful reviews on the app world due to their bare-bones nature. Shazam isn't here. Stitcher isn't here, etc., etc. That doesn't mean there's no hope for BlackBerry. Quite to the contrary, the app selection is exploding, and hopefully that growth rate will continue as BlackBerry puts out more devices and keeps landing million-unit orders. For the time being, though, the BB10 app ecosystem is still fledgling, and without apps, offerings like content matter a lot less. For a new smartphone user or someone upgrading from an older BlackBerry, the Z10 still makes sense. For someone used to a wider array of apps, like an Android or iOS user, though, we can't recommend the new BlackBerry over the HTC One and its powerhouse Google Play Store. Not yet. BlackBerry was pretty good at the fundamentals of mobile phones, that is to say, phone calling, in its heyday, and we found that to extend to the Z10 as well. Calls were clear enough, and the speakerphone was even a mite louder than we've come to expect from smartphones. That is to say, until the HTC One came along. The One trounces not just the Z10, but every other smartphone in recent memory when it comes to voice calls. Part of that is the boom sound speakerphone setup with its dual amplified front firing speakers. The One is a much louder and clearer device in loudspeaker mode than the Z10. But the earpiece on the One is also clearer, and its noise cancellation is better. There are plenty of variations in camera performance too. The ultra-pixel camera on the HTC One is lower in resolution at 4 megapixels, but its unique approach to mobile photography means its low-light performance is astronomically better. The One also uses a wider-angle lens to capture more of a scene than the BlackBerry's 8-megapixel shooter, and colors are cooler, closer to life, than on the Z10. The image is also markedly sharper, given a steady hand. The BlackBerry's battery life disappointed us in our early review, but a subsequent software update is said to have improved that situation greatly. We haven't run extended comparisons, but this is truly a mixed bag on paper. The BlackBerry's 1800mAh battery pack is a full 500mAh junior to the battery in the HTC One, but the latter's is embedded, whereas the BlackBerry's is user-replaceable. Software update or no, you'll probably still want a spare battery with you if you're a power user carrying the BlackBerry Z10, and it's nice to have that option. One Phone is an 11th hour last ditch effort from an enterprise company trying to liven up its corporate image, and the other is a Hail Mary attempt at introducing a premium feel to the commoditized Android space from a similarly beleaguered manufacturer. These devices have creators with a lot in common, but the products themselves would almost have to strain to be more different. It's not every day a consumer will be weighing these options together, but when it does happen, the choice will be between two strong products hailing from two very different territories. Which choice the buyer makes will probably be determined by whether he or she needs to wear a suit or a sweatshirt to the office. But maybe, just maybe, these devices will start blurring those traditional lines just a little bit. Folks, we have a whole lot more on both the HTC One and the BlackBerry Z10. Visit us at pocketnow.com. Follow us on all our social feeds. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. Throw us a like if you like the video. Leave us a comment if you have something to say. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.